Welcome back. I'm Serge Sen. In this final segment of our presentation, we'll discuss the yellow comp rule in the context of a bank's compliance management system. As background, you might find it useful to look at the interagency examination procedures and narrative for truth in lending and regulation Z, which includes the yellow comp rule exam procedures. The procedures and narrative can be found in the FDIC compliance examination manual and on the CFPB website. Links to these resources are included on our resource slide at the end of this presentation. In the case of the yellow comp rule, it's especially important that senior management and the board of directors have an understanding of the rule because these individuals are the ones that are generally responsible for setting the compensation structure for the bank's loan originator staff. Additionally, access to compensation agreements may be limited to certain individuals. As a result, depending upon the structure of your institution, you as a compliance officer or someone who is responsible for compliance may or may not be provided access to compensation agreements in order to review this area for compliance. In situations where the compliance staff is not provided access to compensation agreements, review of this area could be performed by an internal or external independent party. The yellow comp rule contains multiple requirements relating to home mortgage originations, only some of which we covered in detail in this presentation. Therefore, conducting a compliance risk assessment could prove beneficial to a bank's overall compliance performance. A strong CMS will incorporate all business lines impacted by the yellow comp rule into a compliance risk assessment. In addition, the results of a risk assessment could assist senior management and the board in making effective and sound decisions. It's also a good way to make sure you've addressed all of the yellow comp rules provisions across all product lines that could be impacted by the rule. Next, let's discuss policies and procedures, training and monitoring. The bank's policies and procedures should be routinely updated to define and address all activities related to the loan origination process within the context of the yellow comp rules provisions, taking into account the nature, size, complexity, and scope of the mortgage credit activities of the bank and its subsidiaries. The policies and procedures could include the identity of those staff responsible for each activity and for compliance with the relevant LO comp rule provision. For example, procedures may be established to allow employees to identify what types of loan transactions and compensation practices are subject to the LO comp rule and what types are not. If your bank pays its loan originators bonuses based on profits all or a part of which are derived from the bank's mortgage-related activities, your policies and procedures should reflect whether such compensation is, as a matter of bank policy, to be included when calculating a loan originator's total compensation as inclusion or exclusion of these amounts is at the discretion of the bank and could affect the amount of a loan originator's bonus permissible under the rule. Again, policies and procedures should be appropriate to the nature, size, and complexity of the bank's mortgage lending operations. While strong policies and procedures in and of themselves can serve as a useful training and reference tool for employees with respect to the yellow comp rule, providing more structured training to key personnel could help ensure compliance with the rule. As with any regulation, the yellow comp rule should be included as part of the bank's routine monitoring. Monitoring for compliance with the yellow comp rule should start with identifying the job responsibilities of staff involved in the home secured mortgage origination process and understanding the role that each plays in that process. Based on that review, individuals that meet the definition of a loan originator should be identified, followed by a review and assessment of the compensation structure for each of those individuals. In addition, a review of loan originator employment and compensation agreements could be conducted since loan originator compensation structures and the manner in which they are expected to originate mortgage loans may vary greatly between loan originators. For example, monitoring could involve assessing whether the origination of an in-house adjustable rate mortgage loan versus a fixed rate secondary market loan results in differing compensation. One way to help facilitate and document the review process would be to develop a checklist from the bank's policies and procedures as well as the rule. The bank's monitoring procedures should include board and senior management report of findings with respect to the bank loan originator compensation practices and any non-compliance with the LO comp rule. 
As part of your compliance management system, an audit of compliance with the LO comp rule may or may not be needed depending upon the bank's volume of mortgage originations and the complexity of its mortgage products, lending operations, and loan originator compensation structures. In some cases, routine and effective monitoring may be sufficient. An audit may be conducted by an external party or internally by someone at the bank not directly involved in this area of the bank's activities. The audit should provide senior management and the board with the determination that the board approved policy and procedures for the yellow comp rule are sufficient in scope and detail to meet the needs of the bank or indicate weaknesses that need to be addressed. Now I'll turn it over to Jonathan Miller, FDIC's Deputy Director of Policy and Research, for a recap and closing remarks. As Serge indicates, this brings us to the end of today's presentation on the yellow comp rule. In this video, we've addressed a number of the yellow comp rules provisions for which our supervised banks have requested more information and guidance. Here's a quick recap of what we discussed. In segment two, we identified the major components of the yellow comp rule. We reviewed what loans are covered, discussed who is and is not a loan originator by examining loan originator activities, and we described what compensation is under the rule. In segment three, we delved into those components of the rule that directly relate to loan originator compensation practices and restrictions, focusing on provisions that we think are of special interest to community banks. In segment four, we briefly highlighted some of the other compensation provisions of the rule. In this segment, we also reviewed the rule's record retention and policies and procedures requirements. Lastly, in segment five, we offered some suggestions for effective compliance management tailored to the LO comp rule. Within this presentation, we also identified and addressed those aspects of the rule that should prove helpful to community banks in hiring high caliber loan originators. For example, the LO comp rule's 10% total compensation exception should provide community banks with flexibility to attract and retain loan originators. And, pursuant to the LO Comp Rules 10 Loan De Minimis Exception, community bank staff that occasionally serve customers with their home mortgage financing needs will be eligible to participate in year-end profits-based bonus plans and similar plans. We'll conclude today by pointing you to some additional resources. Although there are numerous resources discussing the LO Comp Rule, we're highlighting those from the CFPB, as the CFPB is the agency with interpretive authority. The CFPB has made many useful resources available on its website to facilitate compliance with this rule. Here are some that community banks may find particularly useful. A special online version of the rule that enables you to easily jump to the corresponding official interpretations. The Small Entity Compliance Guide to the LO Comp Rule. The Interagency Examination Procedures and Narrative for the LO Comp Rule and for Truth in Lending generally. You'll find the examination procedures and instructional narrative for the LO Comp Rule included there. If you have any further questions on the LO Comp Rule, we hope you will always feel comfortable reaching out to your examiners or regional FDIC staff. This concludes our presentation on the LO Comp Rule. We appreciate your interest and hope you found the information in this presentation to be helpful. Thank you.